All right, so I thought I would talk a bit about the pineal gland. This is something I mentioned before. I made a quick video about this. I just wanna, in this video, just talk about what the pineal gland is, how it works, and why you might want to look at decalcifying the pineal gland or sort of opening your third eye. Now, the pineal gland is a small endocrine gland located directly between the two hemispheres of the brain. So unlike a lot of other brain organs and brain parts, the pineal gland is actually not linked to one of the particular hemispheres. A lot of the parts in the brain are either left or right brain, right? But the pineal gland is actually right in the middle of the two hemispheres. It's about the size of a grain of rice. It's enormously important for things like your circadian rhythm, for regulating your sleep patterns, and it's also the main gland responsible for sexual maturation in males and females as well as you're developing. It's a hugely important thing. The actual purpose of the pineal gland is not really well known. It's obviously strongly linked to circadian rhythm, so your dreams and your sleep and how you feel and how you, your energy works, but we're not entirely sure what its purpose is and how it works. We just, we do know a few things about it. So we know that if there's too much calcium deposits on the pineal gland, it starts to function worse. We know that with impaired pineal gland function, there's an increased risk of cancer. Now, most of these studies have been done mainly on animals. Okay, there's not been a huge amount of research done on humans, but we do know that there's a correlated link between impaired pineal gland function, cancers, and various other degenerative diseases. In a nutshell, it's important. This gland is really important. It plays a huge part in our circadian rhythms and, uh, and in how we sleep and feel in general. The really interesting thing is that throughout history, throughout many, many different civilizations and cultures, the pineal gland has always been represented as the link between the physical world and the spiritual world. Now, interpret that however you want, right? That could mean, when I say spiritual world, that could mean the astral realm, the lucid dreaming realm, or even just visions and hallucinations. But the point is, it's always been portrayed to have a link between the physical aspect of, of life and reality and the non-physical, right? The etheric, the auric, or the energetic and dream-based. So there's no doubt it's important, right? All civilizations pretty much knew this and have known this throughout all of time. But it's only recently that there has been a huge increase in number of things, substances, chemicals, or you know, whatever it is, that damage the pineal gland. Now, I'm not going to go into why, because to be honest, I don't fully know why or understand you know, the methods and motivations behind it. We do know that the pineal gland is very responsible for how we sleep, how we feel, and our energetic levels. I'm not gonna comment on the spiritual side of this because it's very debatable and subjective. This is where things get interesting. So you may have heard the term pineal gland calcification. Now what this means is that the pineal gland is obviously a very delicate and fragile gland. It contains a number of methods and different ways it interacts with all the other things like the pituitary gland and the spinal column and everything like this and it all sort of works in harmony. Throw one part of it off, the thing doesn't function properly and it quite easily just closes up right? It's almost like it's a shy turtle. It just closes up and goes back into its shell. In this case, the definition of that is calcification. Now, what happens when you have too much calcium or other substances in your body, you will deposit calcium and phosphate crystals on the pineal gland. This is not good, right? This is really bad. And these, over time, these phosphate crystals damage the pineal gland, make it function worse. As a result, you know, you're less able to have a healthy sleep pattern. You're less able to think and, and feel right and good. There's also been a link between the pineal gland function and that gland also affecting other things which therefore affect your ability to think and make rational decisions. I can't quite remember, full disclosure, I can't quite remember the exact link and how that happens but I have definitely read about it and it's something that I'm going to be researching a lot more and writing and you know making videos about in the future. Over the last few years there's been a lot of fluoride in our ingestibles, right, in our water, in our toothpastes and in all sorts of other things as well. Now fluoride is a big contributor to calcification of the pineal gland. Fluoride is a poison but for some reason fluoride is still being pumped into our water. If you look into the history behind this, I'm not going to go into it here, but if you just research it yourself you'll see there's a very shady history behind fluoridation in the water those of you who know, you know, right? Those of you who don't, maybe you should research it yourself. I'm not going to go into it because it's a bit of a rabbit hole. The fact is, for some reason, fluoride levels have been increased through water, toothpaste, and various other types of things. Other types of chemicals which can damage the pineal gland have been slowly added to our consumables, like to shampoo and to non-stick Teflon frying pans and all sorts of other stuff. And I'm not sure if this has been designed this way, but in order to the, the end result of that 
is that we increase our intake of dangerous chemicals, which over time, right, and it won't happen overnight, but over a certain period of time, like, you know, the years we're talking here, it will damage your pineal gland, among other things, right? Now, maybe this wasn't the intended effect, but the fact is you should probably look into what you're consuming, whether that's, you know, the thing, the foods you eat and how they're prepared, the chemicals that are used to wash and treat your food, even vegetables. And that's why I normally try and get organic vegetables and I thoroughly wash them, but even that doesn't take out all of the damage, damaging chemicals in them, like the pesticides and whatever. You know, the things you eat are important, but also the things you unwillingly consume. Like the chemicals in, for example, the shampoo you use, they are absorbed by your skin. The chemicals even in your spray-on deodorant, are in, you inhale them and they enter your respiratory system and enter your body and bloodstream that way. There are all sorts of ways that chemicals can enter your body and do damage without you even realizing. Them. This is just an introduction to the pineal gland. I'm gonna be doing a lot more about this because it's something that fascinates me. In the next video, I'm gonna explain maybe how, the link between pineal gland, lucid dreaming, dreams, etc. And then maybe in the video after that, I'll explain how you can activate or open your third eye. Now that's all for another video. One last thing I wanna to say to you guys, I'm still developing my lucid dreaming app Okay, I showed you a very quick screenshot of that before. I went through some basic features, but it's almost finished. Okay, if you really, if you would like this, it's gonna be completely free on the iTunes store, the app store, sorry. It's also not gonna have any ads if I can help it. I'm gonna really try my hardest not to put any ads on it. So I will really be relying on essentially Patreon support and you guys hopefully going onto my site and buying my books to support the development of this app. Now I'm gonna quickly show you this app screen here and then you've got the tools section which is gonna the tools section which here includes like various different types of supplements you know techniques or whatever binaural beats all these things acronyms there's a load of acronyms here I've tried to be really detailed and then you've got the dream journal here which is going to be auto sorted by month you can search by lucid non lucid add dreams it tells you how to dream journal and then the most I would argue the most important feature of the app the reality check reminder. So there's loads of stuff here. You can set the reminders to be however often you want, random. Um, but the point is, since I posted that video about the app the other day, loads of people, dozens of people commented saying they want it on Android. Now, I was unaware that there was such a demand for an Android app. I have pretty much spent my entire budget on developing the iPhone app. If you would like this same thing on Android, I really want to do this, but it's just not within my reach at the moment financially. It costs a lot to develop an app. I'm not coding them myself. I'm sort of directing somebody else to, to develop it for me. So if you would like to see the Lucid Dreaming app I'm about to release on iPhone on Android, and again, it will be free on Android, please consider donating on my Patreon and sort of becoming a supporter or maybe going onto my site, buying one of my books or courses or whatever. Even if you, even if you can't afford to do that, please just leave a comment and like on this video, maybe look at some of my other videos. Every view and every piece of engagement does help me and that will provide me the support hopefully to develop this on Android because I really want to get this out to as many people as possible. This is going to be a free app which really will help you lucid dream. So yeah, go ahead and consider becoming a patron uh, or you know, liking one of my videos, leaving a comment, buying one of my books, whatever, and I will see you next time.